Hey everybody, Star Six Wars 1 here, and welcome to my next anime review. For this one, we look at the next part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures story, Stardust Crusaders. Now, a couple of things to note are, I will be considering both seasons of Stardust Crusaders, though I will not spoil anything for the second season, for this review, as they are the same story. The next thing to note is, there will be spoilers to the first JoJo anime in this review, as Stardust Crusaders is a sequel. There might also be minor spoilers for some of Stardust Crusaders as well. Now, with that said, let's begin. Our story begins with our main character, Jotaro Kujo, being locked up because he claims to be possessed by a demon that is until his grandfather, Joseph Jostar, and a friend of his named Avdul, come to tell him it's a special power known as a stand, which has been awakened by the return of Dio Brando, who survived his final encounter with Jonathan Jostar 100 years ago and has now stolen Jonathan's body to use for himself. However, on top of that, Jotaro's mother has partially awakened a stand that is slowly killing her thanks to Dio's return, and now the only way to prevent her death is by killing Dio. Now with time against them, Jotaro, Joseph, Abdul, and two of Dio's former servants, Kakion and Polnareff, now seek to save Jotaro's mother and put an end to Dio, once and for all. Now the premise alone is pretty great, and adds a tension to the story. The story itself is nearly twice as long as both Phantom Blood and Battle of Tendency put together. How is that you may ask? The thing is they have to get past all of Dio's servants, and he has a lot of them. Now this does slow down the story quite a bit, for better and for worse, as I feel at times it went a bit too slow during the first half. However, it gets better when the second half shows up. The story is really great and what you would expect from Jojo at this point. Now with the characters, let's start with our main character, Jotaro Kujo. Jotaro is the cool and collected leader of the group. He is often able to keep a cool head in most situations, no matter how desperate. And with the help of his stand, Star Platinum, he may be able to save his mother yet. Now, when compared to the previous Jojo protagonists, Jonathan and Joseph, I'd say he's a step up from Jonathan, but a step backwards from Joseph. Joseph had a lot of energy, quick wit, and personality to him that, to an extent, Jotaro lacks. However, he is pretty badass in his own way, which helps his character, and he does have a personality that prevents him from being boring and uninspired. He just takes a while to get used to, but he is a great protagonist in his own way. Next up, let's go with the returning protagonist of Battle Tendency, Joseph Jostar. Despite the fact he is quite a bit older than he was in Battle Tendency, he is still very quick-witted, a jokester, and hammy as heck. Just look at how much the English lines he has in the show for more information on his hamminess. Oh no! Horrid shit! Oh my god! He isn't as hot-tempered as he was when he was younger, and not quite as arrogant, but age hasn't slowed down Joseph, and with his stand Purple Hermit, he seeks to save his daughter's life from Dio's curse. I like Joseph just as much as I did in Battle Tendency, and my opinions of him haven't changed in the slightest. Joseph was awesome, young or old. For the next character we have Abdul. Like Jotaro, Abdul is cool and collected, but unlike Jotaro, shows more emotion. He usually has quick insight of the enemy stands, which is valuable in the group. And with his magician's red, he will help the Joe stars with their quest and put an end to Dio. I'm going to be honest, at first I didn't really like Abdul. Not sure why, he just didn't have the strongest first impression on me. However, like Jotaro, he grew on me, and I grew to enjoy the character. Next up we have Kakion. 
who originally started out as a brainwashed servant of Dio. Once he's freed of this by the efforts of Jotaro, he joined the others in their quest to hunt Dio to repay them for freeing him and to get payback on Dio, and with his stand Hierophant Green, he will be of great assistance in their journey. He is cool-headed, kind, and loyal to those he cares about. Honestly, I really like his character for these reasons. He's one of my favorite Stardust Crusaders characters easily. At last, we arrive at my favorite new character introduced in Stardust Crusaders, Polnareff. Like Kakion, Polnareff starts out the series as a brainwashed servant of Dio. After being freed from it, he joins with the others in their quest as he believes he will find the person who killed his sister in Dio's crew and to get back at them and Dio for brainwashing him and with his stand, Silver Chariot, he will come in handy in his and the other's quest. He is chivalrous, can be a large goofball to near the same levels as Joseph, often finds trouble for himself and the others, is a bit of a wannabe lady charmer and hothead who acts before he thinks. He's a lot of fun to watch and to see him grow as a character. I just really liked his character. Now the side characters and villains serve their purposes and are fleshed out as they need to be. However, I'd be lying if I said all of them are interesting, which is ultimately the character's only weakness. Otherwise, the characters in general are pretty great. For the animation, we once again see David Production take the lead for both seasons of Stardust Crusaders. Most of the animation is pretty much the same as it was in the 2012 series, with the change of colors and manga style. There are some animation moments in the first season of Stardust Crusaders that felt off. However, this is once again fixed in the second season. Everything else is pretty spot on, the character design is distinctive, the backgrounds look nice, and the animation in general looks really great. The OST was made by Yugo Kano, who's not done that many anime works. He's done work for Birdie the Mighty franchise, Psychopaths both seasons, and we'll be doing music for the Ajin movie trilogy. The OST is fantastic. It has range and excitement that the show needed and is just a great listen to boot. My favorite track is called, ironically enough, Stardust Crusaders, which is a very great listen and is blood pumping. I'm actually impressed by the OST, honestly. Next, let's talk about the openings and endings. For the first opening, it's just great. The visuals look nice and fitting, but a huge reason I love this opening is simply the energy it gives off and how hyped I get just listening to it. I love the first opening a lot. The second opening is actually really unique with it being sung by all three people who sung the first three openings of the Each JoJo series, which I don't often see. It's also a great opening. The visuals look even better than the third openings and it's also very fitting. It gives great off energy as well, while adding a feeling of desperation that is fitting to that part of the anime. For a while, I considered this the weakest of the JoJo openings. However, the more I listened to it, I found it to be possibly the strongest of the openings. JoJo's openings, however, are all strong in my opinion. Both ending themes continues JoJo's tradition of using already made songs. The first ending theme is Walk Like an Egyptian by the American band The Bangles. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but if I'm not, I apologize. It is a very fitting song for the first half of Stardust Crusaders, and the ending visuals are also pretty good as well. I'll be honest, I missed Yes's Roundabout from the previous series, and wasn't over that when first listening to the song. However, in retrospect, I really like this song as well and it was a good successor to Roundabout. The second ending theme is Last Train Home by the American jazz band Pat Menthe Group. Again, I hope I pronounced that right. It's a great and a game fitting song to use for the second half of Stardust Crusaders. The visuals are also really good for the ending theme as well. Unlike with Walk Like an Egyptian, I got used to this ending very quickly and liked it from the very beginning. Either way though, both ending themes are great. Interestingly, the first three episodes of Stardust Crusaders is dubbed. However, the rest of it is in sub only. 
From what I've seen, the dub is good, but not great. Some performances need a bit more energy to them, but it's good for only three episodes. Though when I first heard the dub and heard Richard Epcar's voice for Joseph, I bursted out laughing. Not entirely sure why, but I did. Given my past experience with him, if they make a full dub for the series, I want Richard Epgar voicing Joseph, but that might just be me. Aside from that, I'd skip the first three episode dub, as it's kind of pointless to watch, as it's only three episodes of a 48 episode anime, and the sub is great anyways to boot. When going into Stardust Crusaders, I was very worried as I loved the first series so much and was worried I was going into Stardust Crusaders with too much hype and too high expectations. So by the end of the show, I was glad that it met all my expectations and for the most part deserving of my hype. The music in general was great, the animation was good, the characters were fantastic with a few minor exceptions, and the story was really good. I had a ball watching Stardust Crusaders. It was a great follow-up to the first series and was a ton of fun even without it. I recommend it if you liked the first series and want to see more. However, I don't recommend it if you don't like shonens that much. For alternate anime recommendations, the same three anime I did for the first series, those being Bakano, Hunter x Hunter, and Gurren Lagann, are recommended again. I also add the, to the recommendations, Kiriko no Basket, as while it is a different genre than Jojo, it has a lot of energy and heart to it that JoJo also has. Between these, you should have a blast. Anyways, that's all for me. This has been Star Six Wars 1 and Zawardo! See you next time. 